Ecclesiastes chapter 7. An interesting fact that Ecclesiastes chapter 7 is the 666th chapter of the Bible. A good name is better than precious ointment. An ointment is precious. Almost like that ointment, the, the, the broken alabaster box that was put out to Jesus. A good name. There are, well, let's put it this way. And I'm going to say this very carefully because this is 2020 and people are just weird. How many people do you know are named Judas? What kind of name is Judas referenced to? How many girls have you met that have the name Jezebel? And yet Jezebel goes all the way back to the Old Testament, and yet, and probably someone out there today has named their daughter Jezebel. I have not really met any Judases. And what's better than a good name, that's better than precious ointment, is a great character. And the day of death, then the day of one's birth, happy birthday to you, you're not reading your Bible through, because Job and Solomon and Jeremiah have cursed their birthday in the Bible. Let's have a moment of silence for the truth. I believe as Job says, man that is born of a woman is but a few days and, and many troubles. The day of death, then the day of one's birth. And yet Baptist churches honor the birthday of a man born into sin and yet they don't ever honor the new birth. Well, they don't remember the day they were bo they were newly born. Why don't you tell them the, the significance of this is a brand new day for you. Your name is, oh, oh, you just say this prayer and then we'll chalk it down. When we get back to church, we'll write your name down and you're number 4457. Solomon and Job and Jeremiah says, his, and listen, equally as he's written under the sun. You know, you know what Solomon says about one, the death of a person? You're all done with troubles. You're all done with problems as far as earth. Now, if a man, now this is not what Sol, Solomon does not go into eternal life. If a man dies and goes off into hell, the tragedy and the torments only begin and never stop. But Ecclesiastes is not a eternal book. It's a earthly, godly philosophy truth given to us. It is better to go to the house of mourning, a funeral, death, sadness, a hospital room, than to go into the house of feasting. Because you know in the house of feasting, you're more likely to sin than you're in the house of mourning. You're going to have a whoopee-doo, whoopee line. You're going to go all careless, and, and, and you may do something that's sin. Solomon, who's lived life as a king, who when you walk around Jerusalem, uh, what's that on the ground there? That's a piece of gold. Oh, okay. Well, what's that over there? That's a piece of silver. And you don't learn from life unhappiness on top of the mountain. Great hymns and great poems are not written on mountaintops. They're written down in the valleys. I'm trying to think of that famous hymn and I can't get it. <coughs> that was written in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Where it is well with my soul, where his family drowned.
for that for that is the end of all men and the living will lay to his heart and man learn some you're not going to be cautious when the doctor says, you know, everything's well, all the test results are great and fine. Um, you know, I, I'm looking at your blood pressure. I'm looking at your sugar numbers. I'm, I'm looking at your, we got to do something because if we don't do something, there's a problem coming. That's the time when you start acting. Sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance, the face of the spirit, but of the heart, of the heart is made better. And that's that's a hard expression to learn because happy be, you know, be glory. But God has your attention when you're in sorrow. God has your attention when you're in pain. When you're living high on the mountain and you're doing great and wonderful is great, the typical human does not have a regard for God. God's there. But your prayer life is not active. There are more tears and prayers in a hospital facility than a church. Think about that. There are more tears and sorrow at a graveyard than a church. And the fools in Louisiana and New Orleans would make it. Let's make a go. Let's make a great grand old time. Someone dying. That's foolish. The heart of the wise is in the house in the morning. Psalm is laid out in chapter seven. It's not so great to be happy, go lucky, and wonderful. It's great. And who wants to think about that? Who wants to live to that? The wise. But the heart, the heart of the fools is in the house of mirth, celebrating great gladness and wonderful good times. The good times, the, the great times. Solomon was at the zenith of the reign of the of the kings of, of Israel. And he fell in love with women and he married women. And he took a downward spiral into sin and the worship of fallen gods. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise. Somebody tell you and say, hey. Listen to me. You're doing something wrong. You're in a way of trouble. You're not doing right. From a wise man. Then for a man to hear the song of fools radio and jukeboxes. I don't know they have jukeboxes anymore. And more foolish for these Christian contemporary rock and whatever rap and junk and crap music they have in the modern churches. It's better for a preacher to preach the sweat and the hell and the blood and the fire and the sin out of you. Then the crap that's coming out of the guitars and the drums and the whatever musical instruments they have in the modern churches. 
I went to one church, 45 minutes of music and 15 minutes, of, a kind if you want to call it, preaching. As the preacher stumbled to put a cough drop in his mouth because he, he, he couldn't talk clearly. And, and in that church, karaoke, put the MP3 player, put the CD in and grab their microphone and sing along with, that's karaoke. They do that in the bars. Nonsense. You know why people don't like me? Because I tell you the truth and I kick you in the shin about what you believe, what you're doing, and what your worship is. You don't like it. God likes it. Jesus Christ likes it. Glory to God in Jesus Christ. For as a crackling of thorns under a pot. And what is, you got a thorn bush, you put it in the fire. And you got a pot in there, you're boiling water or cooking. And sticks in the air and go pop, poop, crackle. And shoots off, you know, uh, glitter and uh, uh, sparkles. So is the laughter of the fool. That crackling and the popping of the fire of that wood and, and thorns doesn't do the pot anything. The wood that is set afire, the coal, the, or the the, uh, the the barbecue, whatever you have, that's what keeps the keeps the pot boiling, keeps the pot. It's not the crackling. So when a laughter of a fool, it doesn't do anything. And many of these people who are paid to entertain and make people laugh, look at the ends of their life. Look at their lives. They're miserable. This also is vanity, emptiness of no value. Nothing. It is wood, hay, or stubble for the Christian. Surely, oppression. Cruelty, burdens, unreasonable, maketh a wise man mad, drives him crazy. And there is stories of, of throughout history that people have been tortured and people have been mistreated and people have been cruelty treated and it drove them to madness. And there are novels set upon this, this story and this this. Life and a gift destroyeth the heart, a bribe. It's not the gift. Here, honey, I bought you some roses. I bought you a box of chocolate, or I bought you a dress. This is a gift of bribery. I'm going to change the right into the wrong by giving you money, giving you whatever the bribe is, and it can be anything and everything. It's injustice. Better, look at the betters and the hearts of this chapter is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. What a bold statement. Because you know when you got to the end of something, you know how it came out, and all the troubles and trials are done. When Pilgrim came to the end of the Valley of Death, and as the sun was coming up, he turned around and he saw. But when he started in the Valley of the Shadow of Death, it didn't look so well. As he's walking through the valley, it didn't go so well until he got to the end. And when God sets us out on a path to begin, we don't even know by faith where we're going to put our foot on. I've come to things in my life, I put my foot down, it's like, <laughs> is there anything there? And then when you come to the end of an episode of that path, and you look back, it's like, oh, okay. 
And uh, patience, that's the first time the word patience shows up in the Bible. In spirit, is better than the proud in spirit. Pride is a sin. Wait it out. And we're talking about the in a path that, you know, better the end than the beginning. But as you're walking that path, be patient. And don't be in pride. Well, I can handle this. I, I Look who I am. Pride will bring destruction. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. The Bible says be angry and sin not. Now, I have trouble in this area, what I call soon anger. Or soon I get a letter. Oh, and it's a terrible letter. It's a frightening letter. Ugh, what am I going to do? And I overreact. That would be best to learn that, you know what? All right, read the letter. Relax. Take some time. Then come back to the letter or the situation. And be not hasty in the spirit to be angry. Don't be so quick to, to chastise your children. Wait. Relax. Think about it. Maybe you're wrong. And if there is chastisement need to be applied, don't be so rash. Don't be so quick. Wait it out. For anger rests in the bosom of fools. Solomon has great, terrible things to say about fools. You don't want to be a fool. Say not thou. Don't say it. What is the cause that the former days were better than these? The good old days. Thomas says, don't you say that. Oh, I remember back then. Those were the good old days. Oh, I wish I could go back to those days. Thomas says, no. Don't even say it. So if he's saying not even to say it, don't even think it. For thou does not inquire wisely concerning. You're not wise when you look back at the good old days. Don't look back. Look ahead. The only time you look back is count your many blessings and move on. Wisdom is good with inheritance. If you're going to get inheritance, you better get some wisdom. And by it, there's a profit to them that see the sun. So if you're wise and you gain an inheritance, the prodigal son was not wise at all. Man, he found out, you know, I, I got friends. I, I, got, I, got, I got all these people that like me. I got these girls that hang out with me. Whoa, life is a party. All right, hey, the rounds are on me. And then, let's go get some gasoline. I know they didn't have cars, but let's just go spend some money. What he didn't realize when the when the when the money's gone and the riches are gone and he can't go to the pawn store anymore and then he's sitting in the pigsty, where is everybody? Where is my fame? Where is my fortune? Listen, as we're looking at chapter seven, the prodigal son up on high. I got all the money. I got all the friends. I got all the booze. I got hey, everything's great. But we're reading chapter seven. Man, he didn't come to himself when he was in the pigsty. He was hungry. He had no friends. He's in the stinking, rotten mud and manure of the pigs. And he came to himself to say, hey, you know what? Life was better at dad's house. You see, he didn't, like chapter 7, he didn't learn when he was partying. He didn't learn when he was laughing. He didn't learn when he was drinking. He didn't learn when he had friends. He learned when he was in the mud. He learned. And he got right with his father. And he got right with God.
He had no wisdom of his inheritance. He blew it. For wisdom is a defense. A defense is somebody's attacking you. Offense is when you attack. Defense is when somebody's attacking you. And money is a defense. You're going to sue me? I'm going to spend my money. I'm going to get lawyers. I'm going to get attorneys. I may even bribe. I'm going to say it. I, I want to lend it. I want to win the election. I'll put more money, more money, more money. But the excellency of knowledge is you want knowledge. Knowledge is not in money. It's in the wisdom. Now, the wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. The excellency of knowledge is that wisdom. All right. Wisdom. Without the money. That wisdom giveth life to them that have it where money cannot. You know what my eternal life rests upon? It rests upon the finished work of Jesus Christ, the gift of God, not a bribery. We already read about a gift. That's bribery. Listen, the gift of God is Jesus Christ. That's not bribery. If salvation was to be purchased by money, I ain't got nothing. I got just enough money to pay my bills with very little to hang over. And you know it's not money because Jesus said it's easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter heaven. So it's not money. And how did I get knowledge and how did I get the wisdom? When I came to Calvary's cross and I put my faith and trust in Jesus, I got knowledge of the holy. I've got knowledge of what God wanted. Consider the work of God. For who can make that straight which he has made crooked? And I know they spend millions of dollars. They can move a river. They can, they can drill out a mountain. They can cut down a forest. Man is great trying to prove the Bible wrong. But that which that that wisdom giveth light to him that had now consider the work of God. Who can make that straight which has which he has made crooked? Religion ain't gonna make you get to heaven. And when God has says, hey, this is going to be crooked. This is always going to be crooked. And you ain't going to change it. You ain't going to change it. You can go up to Mount Everest and you can have some pity party idiot today. You know, Mount Everest is just too high to climb. I think what we'll do is we'll level out Mount Everest so I can climb it. You ain't going to do it. I think what we'll do is we'll straighten out the Mississippi River. And if you were to straighten out, you would cause a lot of trouble, a lot of hardship, a lot of problems. There's in our solar system, one of the planets, it crosses the path of another planet. I forget which one it is. You ain't going to fix that. Listen, when that asteroid or meteorite, that... When wormwood comes it's going to hit the earth and it's going to make the waters bitter you ain't going to change that the crooked path that's going to be led to the antichrist you can vote all you want you can put all the democrats in or you can put all the republicans in you can get rid of democrats you can get rid of republicans you can change all the governments you can get rid of socialism you can get rid of capitalism you can do whatever you want but there's a 
crooked path that's leading to the Antichrist that's going to have seven years of dominion on this earth called Jacob's trouble, the time of the tribulation period of wickedness of Satan. You ain't changing that. Men think they're going to. Baptists today, we're going to change the whole government because I can vote. <laughs> <laughs> really? I laugh. In the day of prosperity. Woohoo, there we go. Be joyful. Now, Solomon has been writing, you know, that it is better to be in a house of mourning and not in a house of feasting. It's better, you know, to be have sorrow than laughter and then, you know, sadness. And he says, you know, in the day of prosperity, be joyful. Contradiction. No. But. Here's a good but, but not good if it's your life. In the day of adversity, consider the story of the book of Job and the life of Job is a revelation of pain and sorrow and suffering and death and agony and, and friends that are not really friends and a good man that steps up and speaks for God. You know, there would be there would be a lot of missing information if the 42 chapters of the book of Job was not in our Bible. We would never know that Satan goes up to God's throne. We would never have known that God allows Satan to do things. We would never have known that Satan controls the whirlwind, controls the weather. We would never know that we could have friends that are not really friends at all. God also has set the one over against the other. There's always going to be somebody over you. You're always going to have a I'm going to be I'm going to have a business and I'm going to be the boss of my business. Your customers are going to be ruling over you. And if you don't please your customers, you don't have customers and you don't have a business. Well, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get married. I'm going to have a wife. I'm going to have children. I'm going to be the boss of my family. If your wife ain't happy, if your children ain't happy, you're not going to be happy. There's only one that is above, that doesn't have anybody above him. That's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's no one above God in the Trinity. As far as man, there'll be somebody always higher than you. You say, what about the President of the United States? The voters. If you don't please the voters, you're not going to get the vote. What about the Queen Elizabeth over there in England? She has no power. She's not the, she's the queen, but her authority. Well, what about a monarch that does have the authority? Yeah, what about the other ruling kingdom that comes in and conquers the monarch? Adolf Hitler thought, man, he's the ruler of the world. Until the allies came in. America thinks she's on top. She's the greatest. God bless America from sea to sign and sea, even though it's an ocean. God's going to bring somebody who's going to be, I don't know who, but he's going to bring somebody who's going to topple America. And to the end, that man should find nothing after him. Again, the book of Ecclesiastes is, as far as life under the sun, as far as your life living, what Solomon can see, guess what your life ends up? In a coffin, dead. In the book of Ecclesiastes, you end up dead. No, 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 no heaven, no Abraham's bosom, no hell. Right under the sun, life under the sun, your life ends up dead. What then? 
You don't take your money with you. You don't take your riches with you. You, you could be buried with your family, but, you know, what matter does it going to be? The pharaohs were buried with all their riches and their mummified kitty cats. And it didn't do them no well. And somebody's always going to try to overpower you. That's life. And we're going to stop there and pick up the rest next time.